Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Smoked Barbecue Brisket. So there are a lot of different ways to cook a brisket and none of them are right or wrong. There's different techniques, there's different styles and different regions. What we're gonna do today is just a backyard brisket. This is how I would cook brisket at home for my friends and my family. We're not gonna overcomplicate it, we're not gonna over season it because we're not cooking for the judges, we're cooking for us. All right, so this is a whole packer brisket. This brisket is a prime brisket, came from Creekstone Farms. Down here, we have the flat muscle, which is where our slices come out of. And up here, sitting on top, kind of wraps around, we have our point muscle. And this is where our burn-ins come from. Now, we're gonna be cooking this thing whole today, and we're gonna do a little bit of trimming to get started. I'm just gonna start up here on the point and work my way down to the flat. We are gonna cook this whole, we're not gonna separate it. Now we are gonna separate it eventually. Uh, the reason that we're not gonna do it at the beginning is just because the separating can be a little bit intimidating if you've not done a lot of that before. Um, so we're gonna wait until this is cooked down a bit and the fat layer that's in between these two muscles starts to render because it's actually a lot easier to separate these after about five hours of smoking. But why separate these things at all? I mean, can't, can't you just cook it whole? We definitely could just cook it whole, but these two muscles have very different fat content. The point has lots of intramuscular fat that takes a little bit longer to break down. However, it's shaped a little bit differently. It ends up being thinner than the flat. So if we take them apart, we can actually cook them in about the same time. And most importantly, once we get these things separated, we can finish them at their own pace and we can turn that point into burn-ins because I can't cook brisket for you guys and not give you burn-ins. So like I said, the point has lots of intramuscular fat and that is the fat that's really going to make the cut moist and juicy on the inside. Uh, so we don't need this fat cap. It's not gonna do anything for us to keep it on here except that it would keep us from getting rubbed to really attach to the meat and season that meat. So you'll just never quite get the same crust by putting rub on fat as you will by putting rub on meat. Now the technique you want to use so that you're not taking too much meat away with the fat, if you need to get your hand under here you can to kind of lift that up. You cut yourself a tab, hold on to that tab, and then start taking that fat away with your knife pointed even or even a little bit upward. That way you're not digging into the meat too much. Now you can see how gray this meat is over here. I'm gonna go ahead and take that little layer off the outside, get rid of that gray meat. The other thing this does is it really exposes where these muscles come together. So check that out, right here we've got our flat and right here we've got our point. And there's that fat layer that runs right in between the two where you separate eventually. Now when we get down here to the point as we're doing our trimming, you can see we've got a good Oh, half inch plus of fat on top. I'm gonna to take some of that down, but we are gonna leave some of it behind. I just really enjoy that texture when you bite into a slice of brisket and it's got that little quarter inch of fat on top. So here we have the fat layer on the opposite side. And this is where the point is coming to meet the flat and it kind of curves around. So it's got this long kind of thin skirt right here. We're gonna do the same thing and just take this down to about a quarter of an inch. And then we're gonna get into this wedge right here. There's a kind of a wedge of fat that sits between the two muscles. I'm gonna trim that out just a little bit, just to help that rendering process go quicker. Now this wedge of fat actually isn't too huge. I've seen much bigger on briskets, but we'll get in there just a little bit. thing we want to be careful of is we make sure we're always cutting into white. Once we get into red or pink, we need to readjust where we're doing our trimming. All right, so that's pretty smooth and aerodynamic there for the smoke to flow right over. So this looks pretty good on the top now. We're gonna flip it over, see what work we have to do on the opposite side. Here we have a massive hunk of fat that we really don't need there. So I'm gonna trim away at that. This is just really hard fat that would never render down. At least not in the time it takes for us to smoke this brisket. 
So now we get a good look at both muscles from the opposite side. Here we have the flat, and this is the fat, and then this muscle over here is the point. We've got that big old wedge trimmed out. Look at that thing just sitting there. All fat. Now at this point, I'm just gonna clean up the bottom, get rid of any excess fat. I'm not gonna go crazy on it because again, we're not trying to impress any judges. All right, so we got this thing all trimmed up. We got the fat taken off of the point here. We got our quarter inch of fat left on the flat. We're ready to inject and season. Now injecting is not a necessity. If you wanna skip this part, you can, but it's really a good opportunity to add a little bit extra moisture and flavor. So we're starting off with a cup and a half of beef stock. It's unsalted. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of Worcestershire for the tang, and then another tablespoon of hot sauce. And this is a smoky red chili hot sauce. The Flay Volcano, great flavor, great heat. It's not gonna burn anyone's taste buds out. It's just the right amount. So just shake that up. And I'm gonna pour off about a half cup to add to the wrap later on. Now being that the point muscle has so much fat running through it, I'm not going to inject that muscle. I'm just going to be injecting the leaner flat muscle. The way I'm going to work at this is come in across the grain and make a little pocket, add a pump or two of injection until it starts to come back out. And then we're going to work in a grid formation here just to make sure that we get all of it covered. I love how you can just see the meat inflates with that liquid inside. It feels like confirmation that you're really adding something to it. All right, so we've got this thing pumped full of our injection. About three quarter cup is what we got in there. And you can see not much more than maybe a tablespoon or so came back out, if that. All right, weapons of choice today. We're running with Cattleman's Grill California Tri-Tip. Nice savory flavors, garlic, bell pepper, onion, salt. And then we've got the Plowboys Bovine Bowl. This is one of my favorite barbecue style rubs for beef. It's got a little bit of sweetness that the Cattleman's doesn't have, which is great for a barbecue rub. It's also got a little bit of red color, which I like on the outside of the brisket. So we're gonna go with our finer rub first. This is our base layer. Big piece of meat. You're probably not going to over season it. And we're getting all surfaces here. And let's just give this a minute to kind of tack up to make sure that our coarser rub was also going to stick. All right, so once that looks wet, we'll go ahead with our next rub, the Cattleman's California Tri-Tip. And you'll notice how much more coarse this is. I love this texture, especially for a big piece of meat like this. It's going to make a difference when it comes to forming the bark. It really gives it another dimension. All right, same thing here with the more coarse rub. We're going to let that soak up. This has been a couple of minutes now. It's attached pretty well, so we can flip this over. Now, don't worry about flipping it over. That injection's not gonna come back out those holes. It's really worked its way into the fibers of the meat. Now, that opposite side had the moisture of the injection on it. This side doesn't have that yet, so we're gonna add a little bit of that injection here. This is our binder. Uh, nothing crazy. Uh, you could use oil, you could use mustard, but we already have this injection here. It's just going to wet the surface enough so that the rub will stick to the meat. Now again, we're starting with our barbecue rub, the bovine bowl. That's our base layer. It's gonna give us a nice bit of red. Touch of sweet, not too much though. We'll let that set up before we get our tri-tip rub on there. And again, we're bringing in the savory world to mix with the barbecue world. This is 
a great combination for beef. All right, we'll give it a few minutes and we'll head over to the smoker. Today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640 pellet grill. It's set to 250 degrees and we're burning cherry and pecan pellets. We're gonna go right here on the second shelf. I'm putting a point over here by the stack. The smoke should move right over this. And as it moves a little faster, it's gonna cook just a touch hotter at this end, which is fine because we got two muscles sitting on top of each other. All right, now fat side up, fat side down. A lot of people have a lot of strong opinions on it. I'm not one of them. I don't think it matters a great deal which way you go. I can tell you that if you put the fat side up, it doesn't do anything to add extra moisture inside the meat, it just drips around it. If you put it down, however, it might give you a little bit of a thermal barrier, say if you were on the bottom shelf where you've got some radiant heat coming off of that plate. So in my experience, there's not a drastic difference. I say, you do you, you cook it the way you wanna cook it. After all, it's just cooking. At this point, we're just gonna let it ride. 250 degrees, we're looking to get a nice bark on the outside. My estimation is we're looking at about five hours before we do anything. We're about five and a half hours into this cook now, and I've been checking on the color for the last 30, 45 minutes. I wanna show you where we're at so you can see what we're looking for. We've got a really nice crust form. This is a beautiful bark. It's getting to a dark red mahogany color. So this is what we're looking for when we want to pull this thing off. Get some really great moisture pockets here as well as that fat begins to break down. What I want to do next is separate the two muscles so that we can finish them individually. One, like we talked about earlier, this will allow us to cook these to their proper doneness without overcooking one or undercooking another. Another thing it does is it really allows us to turn these burn ends to something special. Next, I'm going to be separating these two muscles, the point and the flat, so that we can finish them in separate foil wraps. That way we can make sure that we don't overcook one and undercook another. Now, I think the easiest way to get in here and do this is we know where this point meat came around and sat on top of the flat. So I'm gonna start right here. And you can see all this stringy stuff. That's the stuff that's holding it together. That's the fat in between the two muscles. So now that this is rendered a little bit, it's really easy to kind of pull these two apart. I'm gonna let gravity do most of the work here. I mean, these two almost want to pull apart just the way it is, which makes it really easy to figure out where to make your cuts. There we go. So just to clean this up a little bit, I'm gonna take off some of that hard fat that doesn't render as well. Same thing right over here. All right, so we'll start by putting this point here on the foil and look at all this goodness that's left on the table. We don't want to leave that behind. That's really flavorful stuff. So we'll leave some of that for the flat as well. And remember that half cup of the injection that we saved back, we're gonna put a quarter cup in each wrap. A little beef stock Worcestershire hot sauce. Tons of flavor to go into that brisket. Now do yourself a favor and use two sheets of foil. That way if one gets punctured, you don't lose all your juices. And you wanna wrap this up just as tight as possible. The tighter we wrap, the less room there is for steam the more bark we retain in the end. Same thing now with the flat. Gather up your goodness. And that last quarter cup of the injection liquid. Again, super tight wrap. 
Now, if you're wondering why are we wrapping these at all, well, what this does is it keeps all of the moisture inside the meat, or at least inside the packet, so that the meat can soak that moisture back up in the end. Now, the other really important thing that wrapping does is it expedites the cooking process, which means you're not waiting quite so long to eat brisket. All right, so our brisket's going back on the smoker at 300 degrees now, because again, I don't want to be waiting forever to eat this brisket. We're going to cook just a little bit hotter. We're seven and a half hours into this cook, which is a pretty nice timeline to be where we're at because I think we're getting really close to finishing out our burn ins and for our slices to get nice and tender. All right, here we have our point meat. Let's open this guy up. Wow, smells fantastic. We're gonna do a little probe test. That's feeling pretty buttery, especially down here in the thinner parts. If we're looking at a temperature, and we don't have to, but we can, 211, 210, so right in that range. This guy's ready to come off and get cubed up, tossed in sauce. But while we're at it, I'm going to check on the flat as well. Let's see how the tenderness is. Well, we still got a little resistance down here. That's going to need a little bit more time. You really don't want much resistance at all when you're probing. And if we're going to check a temperature, let's see. 210. So chances are we're not far off at all because that's pretty much a done temperature. I'm just going to look for a little bit more breakdown in the collagen. Let's check on it for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. All right, so I'm going to take this foil and move it over here to the sheet pan. We'll finish out the burn-ins on the pan here. I'm going to leave all that juice in there, though, because there's tons of flavor in that stuff. Now we'll come back to our point, and we're going to look at this and try and figure out the muscle fibers seem to be running this way. I'm going to go against those. We're going to cut some cubes out of this. So first into strips, then into cubes. And that's just cutting like butter right now. There's one of those cubes. Look at all that juice we've got going on in there. Beautiful. All right, let's get some sauce on these. I'm gonna toss these back through their juices. Now you're gonna choose your favorite brisket sauce. And as you know, I'm a big fan of the Firebug grilling sauce, which is what we're gonna use today. All right, so not too much, just enough to add that barbecue sauce flavor, a little bit of sweetness. I'm gonna add a little extra sweetness with the honey here, which does some nice things for caramelization. And then we'll just give it all a toss here. And this is gonna go back onto the smoker. Nicely coated, spread it out. So the grill's still riding at about 300 degrees. These just need a little bit of time for the sauce to tack up. So we're putting them back onto the grill. The flat's gonna be coming off and resting. And it won't be long before we're eating brisket. So let's just go ahead and open this up just to make sure we're at the spot we're ready to take this off. Oh yeah, a lot less resistance. We're getting there. I think this guy's about ready to come off. If we're looking at internal temperatures, climbing up to that 210 mark. Burn-ins are gonna work away. They're, that sauce is gonna tack up. We'll be back to check on those in about 15 minutes. Guys, these burn-ins are looking beautiful. It's time to pull them off. Check that out. Just perfect color. That sauce is tacked up. And I bet you these are super tender. Look at that, just perfectly glazed. Let's check on the tenderness here. Yeah, just a little bit of tug to it, but comes right apart. Mm. Spot on. Sweet and savory are balanced really well. 
just incredibly tender and smoky. It's exactly how I want my burn ends. All right, brisket's been resting for a while now, about half an hour. I'm gonna pull this out, slice into it. Now we're gonna be slicing across the grain. So if you look at this, start to pull it apart, you can see that the muscle fibers are running this way, which means our knife is going this way. Nice. Got some good juice going on in there. A little pink smoke ring going on on the outside. I'm gonna get in here with some, uh, these are pencil thick slices. Again, just slicing like butter. Let's check the hang on these. I think that's just about right. Very little resistance. As we pull on that, it comes right apart. Perfect. Mm. Just melts in your mouth. Such fantastic flavor. Great smokiness. And I love that little bit of fat cap right there on the top. It's just such a nice difference between the meat and the fat. The textures are great. Now that is a brisket platter. And you'll notice, no sauce on the slices, you don't need it. If you want it, go ahead. I mean, do what's in your heart. Check out the angle of the dangle. It's just right. Got it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.